Welcome to the Fitness Pain Free Show, where I help physical therapists learn how to get their clients out of pain and back to training in the gym. My name is Dan Pope, and I'll be your instructor. I'm a physical therapist, coach, and fellow media. I love training just as much as you do and want to help you get all of your patients out of pain and back to the gym where they belong. Hello, what is going on, guys? This is Dan from Fitness Pain Free. We have a really good show for you today. We have an expert interview, and the topic is, is CrossFit bad for shoulders? Let's get rolling. So first and foremost, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your support. You allow me to do what I love for a living. My name is Dan Pope. I'm a physical therapist, coach, personal trainer, and meathead. I love fitness. I love lifting weights. This is the Fitness Pain Free Show where we help coaches and physical therapists like you get your patients out of pain and back to training. If you are watching this on YouTube, please hit that like button, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If you're listening to the podcast, please give a five-star review. It's much appreciated. So if you want to go that extra mile and support the channel even further, please consider subscribing to my premium membership, Fitness Pain for Insiders. It's a comprehensive educational resource and toolkit for the fitness and rehab professional. So I think Netflix, but for trainers and physical therapists. It's premium content from yours truly. I make all the content on there. And it's similar content to the show, but way more in depth. It's updated monthly. I've been updating this thing for the past five or so years, and there's a lot on there. There's 100 plus webinars, ebooks, and complete guides. You also have access to a private Facebook group to have all of your questions answered by me. You also get a chance to decide upcoming podcast topics. So if there's something you really want to learn more about, hear me go in depth about, let me know. I can do that. And you can get started for just $1 for a week-long trial. And after that, it's a recurring membership of $9.99, all right? You can cancel at any time, all right? I won't be uh, upset if you do. And if you want to get started, all you need to do is head to fitnesspainfree.com, click on the programs link, and then click on the Fitness Pain Free Insiders Online Library and get started. So first, our expert is going to be Dr. Sean Rocket. Now, I was really lucky to have Sean on the podcast because he is the head orthopedic surgeon for CrossFit HQ, and he's been the head surgeon for, I want to say, almost 10 years now. I think 2012 um, is when he <clears throat> was first um, appointed to that position. He's been rated as one of Boston's top docs several years. He actually trains CrossFit, so he goes to the CrossFit gym and trains there. He's been doing that for years, and um, he's a proponent of CrossFit, which I think is great. You don't find too many surgeons out there that really like CrossFit. Uh, if they do like CrossFit, oftentimes it's because it, it drives revenue is what they'll say, right? Because CrossFit hurts people, right? Kidding, kidding. Uh, I've been collaborating for years with Dr. Rocket. We've kind of been sharing patients. I, uh, I love bouncing ideas off of him, uh, seeing what the surgery was like. He's always very responsive. I get to text him, email him, just a, just a good guy in general, right? He is my uh, trusted local surgeon. So if I have a CrossFitter that has a problem that I think that may require some surgery, he's going to be one of the first guys on my list, right? So that's awesome. Uh, the other piece is he has a great website that uh, has a lot of great information there. 321gomd.com. Make sure you check it out. And without further ado, let's get this thing going. Hello, Dr. Rocket. Thank you for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Dan. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is going to be a fun one. I love talking about CrossFit and shoulder surgery. It's going to be really good. Some of my favorite topics. <laughs> great. Um, uh, the first question is, is CrossFit bad for shoulders? And this is a huge gray question. And I wanted to open up with a little bit of research that just shed some light on how common injuries are in CrossFit. I'm going to butcher these names, so I apologize for the authors. I doubt they're listening to this podcast, but Wagoner et al. in 2020, they're looking at rates of injury in CrossFit, and the rates of injury are pretty similar to Olympic weightlifting, powerlifting, running, and gymnastics. Now, um, that's great because these sports don't really have a very high risk of injury, but to give you some context, things like bodybuilding and golf, and in some studies, Olympic weightlifting, uh, the risk of injury is actually a little bit less, right? Uh, and then in contact sports, it's definitely higher. So right. it's kind of in the middle and very similar to other forms of recreational fitness, right? Yeah. Um, and the second thing I will say is that several studies have shown this, but if you're looking at what area of the body gets injured most with CrossFit, it tends to be the shoulders first, followed by the low back and the knee, uh, depending on the study, they kind of switch. Uh, but far and away, it does seem like the shoulder 
does tend to get injured more than other areas of the body. Yeah. What do you think about that, Dr. Rocket? Yeah, um, you know, I've looked at the literature and seen the studies and they a good way for them to break it down was a study by um, Fado that looked at, I think it was about 0.29 to 0.34 uh, injury rate per thousand hours of exposure. So that's the mechanism that they use to derive if somebody's training five days a week, you know, as opposed to just one day, they, they actually take the hours, the number of hours and their exposures and they, that's the number that has been looked at. And that number is, you know, again, in other studies, higher at 0.74. Uh, and then in some studies, like 1.9, I think was another study. But overall, I think everybody has come to into a scientific mechanism that the injury rate is comparable, as you said, to gymnastics, uh, weightlifting. Um, and, you know, some studies compared it to rugby, too. Yeah, for um, sure. <clears throat> and then, yeah, thirty-nine percent of shoulders were up there. I think it was shoulders were number one, backs, and then knees, which is you know different from I think the sports that we're just used to seeing. I think you know we we were used to you know basketball, soccer, football, very high knee injury rate, and CrossFit actually has a very low injury knee rate, uh, knee injury rate. So um, I think it's you know when we hear of all these shoulder issues that you know, our antennas go get up and, and we're, you know, concerned about it, which we, you know, rightly, rightfully should be. And we'll talk about, you know, what we can do in the future. Yeah, for sure. And uh, guys, if you want to figure out how many injuries that actually is, you can just do some math. And if you work out four to five times a week for about an hour, which is pretty reasonable for most folks going to a CrossFit gym, that's one injury every about two years or so. Um, so it's not crazy if you look at it from that perspective. So yeah. Um, Dr. Rock, I got a host of questions here for you. Sure. So, yeah. The first okay. one I have is what are the most common shoulder issues slash injuries you end up seeing? Yeah. The number one most common thing I would say is tendonitis. CrossFit for most people is something that they haven't done. You know, the, a lot of people are, uh, you know, we're college athletes or high school athletes and they, you know, they're 30, they're 40, they maybe have a kid and they're, getting back into, you know, feeling like they've got to lose the, the dad belly. And so they start lifting weights and they start putting weights over their head and they start doing more push-ups and maybe even advancing to pull-ups and maybe even advancing into further elite gymnastic type maneuvers, which, you know, is another issue, but we have to be careful with that. But so number one is it's just volume, higher training than what they've been doing by, you know, pushing around a shopping cart and, and carrying their two-year-olds and three-year-olds. So I think that's the really the most common thing I see is just the new onset of new activity for something that people haven't seen a lot of in their shoulders. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. Um, I know this is a kind of a tough question, but um, in terms of which tissues are getting yeah. irritated, um, are you talking the rotator yeah. cuff? Yeah, are you no, talking hands, hands down biceps. Biceps tendonitis is, um, you know, because I've seen enough of people with, you know, this anterior, and I'll you know, show you the anterior shoulder pain. And I've gotten MR arthrograms on a bunch of them because, you know, they, they, you know, continue to not improve as quickly as we wanted to. And their labrum's clean, their rotator cuff's clean, and there's no structural deficit. But they continue to have some residual biceps pain. And, uh, and so I think that's, you know, biceps tendonitis until proven otherwise. And eventually, with more time, and more mo activity modification and rest, uh, it goes away, gets better. So I've been able to, you know, see people from the beginning all the way through their biceps tendonitis. And that's really the number one most common thing I see. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so I'm gonna switch gears a little bit on you. So it seems like the biceps tendon is what ends up being the most irritated for most folks. Yep. Usually some time off, some rest seems to really help with that. Um, how about those more challenging cases where the pain is sticking around for longer you'd like to see? Um, yep. Maybe they do have some positive findings via MRI and you're going down that route of surgery. What are the common surgeries you end up performing for these folks? Yeah. So then if you're talking about structural issues, you know, tears, um, you know, things I see probably most commonly are slap tears and then partial rotator cuff tears. If, you know, again, we're, we're taking the, uh, 
a pool of people this big and we're coming, we're bringing it down to the people that don't get better and, and the people that have, have failed conservative management. So the, the ones that I see that are don't improve uh, is, are mostly, I'd say, slap tears, partial rotator cuff tears, and, and maybe some anterior labral tears from, they may have had a, an event like a snatch gone bad, um, you know, with a, a weight that was maybe probably too, too heavy for them. And they, they felt, you know, that sudden shift, the subluxation. Yeah, great. I, I was going to expand upon that, you know, these mm-hmm. acute versus chronic injuries. Let's go down that acute route just because you had mentioned it. So when someone has a traumatic injury in the gym and they end up going to someone like yourself and they do some imaging, my shoulder hurts, hurt myself doing X movement. And then we find out, yeah, you probably need a surgery. What movements are causing these problems? And then what are the surgeries that people end up getting? Yeah, um, good question. Uh, you know, when any, whenever anything tears, uh, the question is, was it something sudden? Was it a weight that they pulled that was too heavy? Um, a lot of times, you know, they don't have a, a clear history of, of anything going bad or going wrong. Um, then you can talk about, you know, volume. And maybe if somebody has been increasing their volume and then you get into just like pitchers who have slap tears, um, that you know, volume, the number, the amount of volume, and maybe fatigue could come into play. So, mm-hmm. you know, being sure you have good coaches, good programming, um, you know, keeping the overhead volume down, or you know, mixing it up, not having a month of you know a th- hundred kipping pull-ups a day. <laughs> I mean, you know, we obviously talk about kipping pull-ups. Is that really the issue? Um, you know, we talked about how to how to keep people, prevent people from having uh, labral issues by keeping their kipping tight, not you know getting into that big mm-hmm. exaggerated kip. Um, but then you get into you know weight amount of weight. Like is somebody putting up too much weight? And you know the the body's simple. If you have cells and the cells attach, and if the cell f- force gets exceeded, it's going to rip. So you know being careful with PRs is is really important. You know you can't can't expect to make big PR jumps if, if your body's in your tendon, you know, your tendons aren't used to it. Yeah, that is interesting. I want to run a few movements past you that I've seen problems um, occur during. And then I wanted to kind of get your experience because I, I know you're an injury magnet. You have so many folks that come to see you for so many types of injuries in the gym. And it's really good to kind of get your thoughts on which movements might be causing the problems. Sure. Um, I've certainly seen people uh, snatching and lose that weight, maybe a little bit behind them and they come forward with their head a little too much. Maybe the weight wobbles some, they catch it funky. And it seems like they'll have labral pathology, although some folks maybe tear a cuff or something uh, from that perspective. Have you seen that? Is that what you tend to see from a snatch perspective or? Uh, So snatching, yeah, I call it the flying V, you know, where the, the arms are back here, you know. The flying, the flying V. Um, I've seen, yeah, I've seen some subluxations. Uh, some people have dislocated. Um, you know, so again, usually heavier weight than what they should be doing. Um, going for a PR. Uh, so yeah, I've seen labeled tears with that. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, we already kind of touched upon this a little bit, but one movement that gets absolutely vilified and CrossFit has been roasted about this for. I want to say decades now is kipping, right? Um, so is kipping something that you think is leading to some of this pathology that you're seeing, the biceps tendon irritation, some of the cuff problems, maybe some of the, the labral issues? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think I think if if somebody's kipping is really um, I think if somebody gets fatigued and they start to lose their form and they start to I think it's the the traction, you know, when they get fatigued and they're catching themselves, you get a biceps force pulling up. I think that that's an issue. So, you know, I've always told people if you're getting fatigued, just drop off the bar. Don't don't try to hold yourself up, just drop. Yeah. And then the kipping, you know, if you look at baseball players and their you know, that abduction external rotation that puts stress on the superior labrum. So, one would think that that could contribute I don't think so much it's the, the, the rotator cuff uh, issues with kipping. I think it's more the, the superior labrums. Um, but yeah, I think 
you know, fatigue, volume, you know, overdoing it. Again, it's people trying to do too much, not staying within what their coaches are telling them. And then when I give these lectures, it's the coaches who are telling them to back down and these, and people are going beyond. So I think a lot of coaches are trying to pull, pull their athletes back and people are kind of keep going, pushing forward. Um, yeah. that's, that's the fun part that you try to keep going, keep going, keep going, but that's the part you got to be careful with. Yeah, there's lots to unwrap there. Um, but it's interesting you said this because I've kind of thought about this for a while. You think about a thrower when the arm's way behind you, that kind of yeah. late cocky phase, lay back, whatever you call it. Yeah. You have this traction forces from the bicep, maybe peeling off the labrum, the whole peel back yeah. mechanism. And if you think about a, a pull up or a kipping pull up, when you're decelerating, you're probably using your bicep a lot and we're in a similar position, a little bit of external rotation, but flexion overhead. Yep. If that's uncontrolled, you probably just fatigue the crap out of the musculature and you're still hanging on to the yeah. bar and you're bodying out your pull-ups. Um, makes sense. Maybe that is what's causing some issues. Um, one thing I will say about kipping is that I think it's, it's unfairly, I guess, villainized. Do people get hurt kipping? Yeah. Be honest, honestly, the, the biggest injury I see from kipping is from people not putting their thumb around the bar and flying off the bar and then hurting themselves when they land. Um, and I do think people hurt when they kip. So if someone has shoulder pain, sometimes kipping does hurt, but I don't know if it's the biggest. Yeah. I, it's funny you say that. Like I haven't had people say, Oh, on my you know 20th pull up, I felt a sudden, you know, like it's usually not, I haven't had anybody say, Oh, on this pull up, I felt a sudden rip. Like I would say that's not usually not the, what I'm hearing from people. Yeah, I would say the same thing too. Every once in a while, I'll have someone gets hurt while they're kipping and they feel like that was the reason. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do think we're a little unfair with our treatment of kipping in general. So um, let's move on to muscle ups. I'm kind of curious what your thoughts are on the muscle up. Uh, I have personally seen a bunch of, I would consider catastrophic injuries, I guess. I've um, seen a, a few pec tears, complete ruptures, also bad strains with deformities. Um, I've seen some folks that kind of lose it. So they catch in the rings and they fall out, um, end up potentially with rotator cuff, labral problems, that type of thing. Uh, what are your thoughts on the muscle up? What kind of muscle up injuries do you end up seeing? Is there any good insight you have from that perspective? Yeah. I, I mean, I think along with the, you know, ring dips and muscle up, you know, you can get that, that pec strain and then you can get into subscap issues as you come out further that you're straining the subscap in that position um i think the muscle up is is another one of the holy grails that a lot of people are are fighting for and i i i would caution you know be very careful with the muscle up i i've uh, tried it and i've winged it and uh and i i was not happy with it um yeah, so I, think, I think you have to be really a lot, much, much more, much stronger than you think to do yeah. that, that muscle up properly. And, and it's, it's the guy, like, it's the guys who can do the strict that you're not worried about. It's the people that are, you know, flailing and moving and everything's all over the place. Those are the, you know, again, just like a pull up, you have to have a, a certain amount of upper body strength to do it. The, you know, you can do it and it's great when people do it, but to do it with the momentum of, of everything moving and, and trying to gain momentum to do the muscle up, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. There's, there's a risk. There's a risk. Yeah. Any, there's a risk to anything, but you know, muscle ups are what people are fighting for. And, um, you know, if, I mean, it, it's great that people can do it, but again, to be able to do it safely and in a controlled fashion is what I want to see. I don't want to see, you know, the, you know, the, some of the videos that we see, you know, the flailing, yeah. um, like you said, people have barely enough strength with all the momentum of kipping aggressively to get into that deep dip. And oftentimes they get in that deep dip and they can't even get out of it. You know, they catch in that deep, deep position. They barely have enough strength to get up there and then they can't get out of that hole. And maybe they'll kip aggressively and finish a rep, but uh, sometimes that can end poorly. Right. So uh, well, you, you, you definitely want to build up to it. You don't, yeah. you know, you don't want to say today I'm going to do my, you know, you've got to practice, you got to build, you got to be diligent about it. Um, and then, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, and I guess the, the last movement that I want to ask you about, um, so what I see for 
handstands and handstand pushups. I see a lot of folks that aren't very good at them and then they decide they need to get better at them. So they yeah. start doing a lot of them. And yeah. it sounds like they're just probably not prepared for that volume and they just spike their volume and they're doing mm -hmm. a lot of handstands, handstand pushups. Mm -hmm. um, what's your thought on the handstand pushup? Do you see a lot of shoulder issues because of that? Um, is that as a big a problem as some of the other movements? I, you know, I think, um, I think you're stressing, you know, in, in an overhead, you have the impingement that can occur with, you know, 20 to 40 year old men with a shape of their acromion, certain acromial shape. I think with, with females and, you know, the 20 to 40 year old females might be uh, some, some laxity. You know, we, we talk about the, the typical female laxity versus male laxity. I mean, if, you, if we're talking in generalities, what I've seen with uh, overhead female athletes is that there's a, a tendency for a little more instability of the shoulder. And that, you know, if they're overhead and the weight is coming down, that I think we're getting, we're seeing some, some of the, the humerus subluxing or, in, or going inferior. Um, and then we're getting some strain on the biceps trying to keep everything in place. So, you know, if I'm overhead, if I turn my screen upside down, we're getting posterior and inferior travel, you know, motion of the humerus on the glenoid. And so yeah. then we're getting cuff pain, cuff weakness, cuff fatigue, biceps uh, fatigue also. Um, that makes sense. So basically the shoulder is not able to handle those shear forces. If yeah. you have somebody who already has some laxity in the, the ligaments, the capsule, maybe you're getting more motion. Now yeah. you're starting to irritate structures around the joint. You've already fatigued all the musculature. So that's at its limit at that point. Maybe that start hurting, that kind of deal, I guess. Yeah. And then, you know, the biceps is trying to hold, you know, hold on for dear life and holding everything in position and trying to, you know, add, a, add act as a rein on the humerus. And I, so I've seen, you know, some anterior pain with that classic 20 to 40 year old, 20 to 50 year old female who doesn't have a labral tear, but they'll have biceps pain and they'll have a loose capsule and they can, you know, inferiorly or posteriorly and inferiorly shift or sublux. And it can be asymmetric. They'll feel weakness on this side with no labral tear and pain. And on the other side, they feel fine and the same, you know, there's no labral tear, but they have, I think some, some bicep strain on the, uh, on the, on the affected side. Okay, great. And, uh, one last question for you. Sure. Is CrossFit bad for shoulders? Yeah. I mean, you, you know, if you just look at somebody's, you know, physique, who's been doing CrossFit, I mean, that they're building up muscles, they're getting stronger, they're able to pull themselves up They're you know, so in a sense, it's good, but I think you got to be careful. We all have to be careful given the data that we've seen of, you know, there's a risk, there's a risk to it. So I think everybody just has to be, you know, judicious. I think if you, you can certainly, it's a great program for building strength, for getting fit, but, um, you know, you have to be careful. Great. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Rocket. I really appreciate all of these great responses. Um, I think people are going to get a ton out of this. Um, I also always learn so much. So thank you again. And uh, I guess uh, I'll talk to you the next time. Sounds good.